Hi everyone, welcome to Got Therapy. I'm Michael Baltimore. I'm here with Dr. Dan Rose. Dr. Rose, how are you today? I was going to have a little beverage. Need yes, some beverage. a little, a little. That's, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good thing. All right, so... I uh, drink nothing but distilled water, by the way. It's what fuels this beast. Very interesting. You know, Only distilled water. God gives water. you a Ferrari, you want to put the right kind of gasoline in. That's all i got to say. Uh, that almost brings us to our topic today, nice. because we are going to talk about narcissism. Narcissism. I think that's our topic. Mm. So, yes. Very interesting. Mm. You're in a, in a time... Uh, this is uh, Got Therapy 2016, so uh, that means we're in election time, and so there's a lot of Lots of narcissism on display. Uh, lots mm. of narcissism on display. So we want to talk a little bit more about it. Now, we are both licensed uh, mental health professionals, if you mm -hmm. will. And, um, we want and when to, I say that somewhere like Freud or the whole governing body of the APA yeah. sort of shudder, but it's true. That's right. I that, am. That's right. A lot of people wonder. But <laughs> nevertheless, here we are, years of experience. <laughs> um, we dealt with the narcissistic personality disorder in our practices. And so mm -hmm. uh, today... And home life. And home <laughs> life for some of us. Right. So what we'll, we'll do today is sort of break it down a little bit and talk about it. There's an article in one of the newspapers in Washington that talked about a, um, a politician who made the case for a psychiatric evaluation of Donald Trump, who's running for president at this point in time. We're 90 days or, or 100 days away from the election. So uh, she made the case um, using the DSM, mm -hmm. Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, um, version 5 mm -hmm. from the American Psychiatric Association and listed the symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder mm -hmm. and then matched that up with some of the things mm -hmm. that um, Mr. Trump had said during the, uh, his political campaign. Um, so there's a lot of controversy about this and you know politics is something that we try not to talk about but I think mm -hmm. this has pushed us into looking at where we're a little more uh, comfortable in talking, and that's mental health and psychology and issues um, of that kind. So today we're going to talk about the narcissistic personality disorder. I may just say that there is somewhat of a disclaimer that we're not uh, making a diagnosis um, mm -hmm. at a distance. I don't mm -hmm. think we want to cross that line, but we certainly just want to discuss the issues in mm -hmm. general and mm -hmm. talk about some of the claims that have been made particularly about um, what's, what's come up uh, mm -hmm. in the very recent news and with this article mm -hmm. Uh, that was published saying that the congresswoman has said he needs a psychiatric eval. Yeah, and the Washington Post about um, about one uh, Donald J. Trump. Yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit about this. First of all, what um, there are personality disorders, mm -hmm. and um, that's a classification in uh, in the my whole dating history. I can tell yeah. you, I've, uh, <laughs> go back. Uh, my love life is a tour through the DSM. Okay, it's, yeah, uh, and there's a lot in there, but basically it's a classification system of mental disorders and it's used throughout mental health, psychology, and so forth to, um, to help understand the presenting symptoms uh, by a client, a patient coming in for treatment and uh, then therefore leading us to a course of, of treatment and that's <coughs> a very dense, quick uh, uh, sort of definition of it. Can you uh, talk a little bit about this? First of all, talk about the personality disorders in mm. general, because there are a number of those, the borderline they are, and the they histrionic are. and so forth. Mm. Um, let's, let's start there, and then we'll kind of filter down to the narcissistic mm. personality mm. disorder. So um, one of the things we know about personality disorders is that they are long-term in nature. I've heard that said quite a bit. Mm -hmm. so so there, there's some indication that as one gets older, that some of the symptoms of personality disorders, particularly those of antisocial, even narcissism, diminish. There seems to be something there. It's also important to remember that these are very blurry categories, and there's a lot of controversy over how to define them. Um, I, I went to a, um, a big conference a few years back where they had every expert in, uh, so they took like whoever, the, the expert in narcissistic personality disorder, or the expert in borderline personality disorder. Kurtenberg was there, all these guys, and all of them universally said, that we really don't know what we're trying to define. And there's yeah. lots of blur in all right. this. So it's, it's really, one may maybe think about this, and, and, and I sort of distill it down into something really, really, really simple. And it's how we deal with our emotions in relations to others. And that you could sort of take all those personality disorders and they sort of help define a specific way that people deal with the feelings they have in relationship to others. Does that make okay. sense? Sure. So you, you, then you have like, um, 
borderline personality disorder, mm -hmm. you have uh, antisocial personality disorder, you have obsessive compulsive personality disorder, you have narcissistic personality disorder. And one that's popular these days, the bipolar. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and um, it's interesting you say that because um, lots of things that we have today were, were listed squarely within that personality disorder syndrome and they, they sort of wandered into other categories and areas. And um, that, that's what makes it, and there's lots and lots of bleed over. But, um, right, so there's no uh, straightforward mm -hmm. uh, demarcation between these personality disorders. Some of those symptoms may mm -hmm. cross over, and so a person mm -hmm. may have some uh, mm -hmm. from the different categories that are crossing mm -hmm. over. It's very interesting that we don't have a very precise, mm -hmm. uh, but that's, that's human nature. That's the mm -hmm. nature of what we're doing with mental, mental health, I guess. Mm -hmm. But in our uh, culture, in our society, we have our own definitions of that, but mm -hmm. for the most part, it um, we yeah, need any to any look woman at that. who wouldn't go out with me, I just automatically assume there's. there's you assume that it's, they have a disorder. Oh, they have a disorder. I was thinking <laughs> right. you were confirming. No, no, no. It's obvious had... that this individual who didn't want to have time to spend time with me was. All right, somehow I think you, sick. You're, you're beginning <laughs> to open up what we need to look at, and those <laughs> are what what are these symptoms that uh, people display in the narcissistic personality disorder? So, what what is this narcissistic? Well, personality? But first, what I would do is I would I would. Um, Anytime you want to think about any diagnostic category, you want to first normalize it, and that there. Um, and one of the, <clears throat> I, I did a lot of training um, with folks who were trained under Heinz Kohut, and Kohut was a guy who invented this thing called self psychology. Uh, it still exists, but it was certainly big in the uh, 70s and 80s. Sure. And uh, narcissism was the cornerstone of his uh, of, of his theory, and. Um, that narcissism is a form of a disorder of the self and it sort of goes like this that we all have a self that we have to maintain we have to maintain some sort of inner equilibrium about how we feel about ourself and others in the world and that um, there are always things that throw us off that equilibrium things that sort of happen and when they do we can engage in lots of activities, potential, and one of those would be the self-aggrandizement, that, mm -hmm. that inflation of the self, the puffer fish sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So in the face of feeling anything, feeling anxiety, slight discomfort, we can suddenly puffer fish it and we can suddenly make ourselves the biggest thing in the room. It's, 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 and it's, Coet would say that that's defensive. He would also say that it's on a continuum. All of us have to maintain a narcissistic equilibrium. We okay. all have to. Okay. And that, but there are healthier and less healthier ways to do so. And I think the nature, what her article is saying is she thinks, and this is her opinion, that uh, Trump is someone who has displayed over and over again an unhealthy way to maintain that equilibrium. Right. And the result, he may not be someone you want with the most powerful job in the world. So someone who uh, is uh, out of the equilibrium, uh, much more so balance toward the self than mm -hmm. others. In other words, everything mm -hmm. has to be centered around. It's almost a self-centeredness. Uh, everything that uh, is out in the world, mm -hmm. even other people, has to do with themselves. Mm -hmm. well, well, part of the, the at the healthiest continuum, uh, we may have a moment, we slip when, that dis, that when we get in that disequilibrium, we, we can see the world, we can only see ourselves and the rest of the world around us, the people around us as part objects. But we can quickly, or relatively quickly move back to a place of balance where we can see ourself and other people as other selves, as whole objects. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we might be able to apologize. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, and it's very difficult to say whether this is actually political th theater or not, but one right. of the things that Democrats right. did a really good job of was sort of um, uh, making use of um, the, the, the Muslim American father who'd lost his, his right. son in, in Iraq. Very controversial uh, issue, and um, controversial because of Trump's response to that. And again, it's hard to say how much of this is political theater and uh, how much is being played up and, and distorted. But Trump's response, um, which again, if it, he was under attack, that's the guy was waving the Constitution and said, "You've lost nothing." So we can see at that moment, Trump sustained a narcissistic injury that anybody would experience. I think that's a universal occurrence. If, if you were attacked in that way, what we want to think about is how he responded. And I think what the Congresswoman says that Trump's response shows an inability to see the other, that he continued to maintain the role to see the father and his wife as part objects. 
if he had said something akin to, you know, um, I, uh, I, 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 you, your son gave the ultimate sacrifice for his country. Um, I, I hope that you can be proud of him, and I certainly am. And you know, I, I disagree with the things that he said, and I really think that maybe he and I should sit down and talk. And if mm -hmm. we did, I think mm -hmm. he might see that I am much closer to the way that, to what he believes, or whatever. He could say something right, like that. Right, right, sure. But if you'll notice, in res that sort of response requires the capacity to be able to see the other. And you could say, and I think that's part of what she's trying to say here, is that his response was one of, he continued to be focused on his own injuries and not so much on the person in front of him. Right. You, you talked about a wound, that, it, mm -hmm. that his ego, his uh, sort of definition of himself was, uh, was uh, accosted. It was, mm -hmm. uh, he saw it as, as some, uh, some attack on <laughs> himself, when, um, which really kind of leads to the cutoff from others, the, and I would say empathy, the idea of um, you know, sort of understanding what go, what's going on with another person and how it affects and have that moment of empathy as opposed to feeling attacked and then having to attack back. I think, and you know, Kohut's contribution to, to our field is that he raised empathy to the nth degree, that empathy is the thing that cures and empathy is the thing that a narcissist needs. So that in, when, in Kohut's treatment of narcissists, he would again not, not where whether it's Trump or whoever we might deem this as narcissist. Not we're saying Trump's a narcissist. They keep making that disclaimer. APA has been called narcissist. <laughs> That's it, right? But right. Um, that if someone who is a narcissist comes into treatment, um, um, and I'm, I'm sort of combing through uh, some of the things that have occurred with patients over the last few weeks, and I have a couple of patients who fair, pretty squarely move in this narcissist realm. Mm -hmm. I think of a patient who begin to, um, he has a roommate, and his roommate um, didn't clean up the dishes. Right. And so he came in and he spent the first 15 or 20 minutes talking about how the roommate was horrible, the roommate was a loser, the roommate was overweight, the roommate was all these sorts of things. And it was this, 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 this what Coet calls narcissistic rage. Okay. So he experienced the lack of dishes, and anybody in that situation would be annoyed, maybe even right. really upset. But what made this narcissistic is it, is it spurred narcissistic rage, and then there was this poisonous attack in which the roommate became a part object. There was splitting. The, part, the roommate became this horrible person. If this person was organized a little differently, they may have experienced that frustration as anger and say, and but they still might hold and maintain some image of the other where they weren't this, this complete and utter, and they weren't, mm -hmm. it, it didn't become rage. Right. And what I think she says, and there, there's even some couple of articles that we, we have here too where, you know, she would say that Trump has a tendency to respond to every attack from, the, the, from a Twitter feed, from wherever the case may right. be, right. With, with a certain level of rage calling his opponents dumb right. and crooked right. and lying and all that sort of stuff. Right. And that that might reflect this, this, this narcissistic rage that comes from any slight wounding. Right, in, any small. That mm -hmm. Most of us would probably take that hit, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't invoke cause that us type. to whoop. Right. And then that, suddenly that have to reassert ourselves in some ways that are clearly narcissistic in nature. Well, it, it's interesting in a political climate, too, because now we're at the national uh, election uh, cycle past the primaries, and the notion is that uh, this is on a much bigger stage. Um, there, there's also something about seeking attention that is in this narcissistic um, symptom list, if you will. But also at the same time, uh, you have to be seeking attention. You want people's attention. So the system that they're in is almost as if it's encouraging mm -hmm. the narcissist. Yeah, there, was a, that there was an article, and I can't remember where, this was long years ago, where they were talking about, and they were using examples of the continuum of narcissist. And they were using Bill Clinton as an example of a more healthy form of narcissist. Okay. But what you said is, you know, to, to, want, to, to, to want to get up in front of people or to have the eyes of or lots of people to be thinking of you, that is, that is a form of narcissism. That, that, that is, you know, but again, we have to put that in a continuum and we have to be able to say that there is a, um, Freud called it primary narcissism. And uh, Freud, Freud's vision was, is that, and he had that libido theory, so there was this notion that we had, uh, we had all this energy that we're directing toward ourselves, 
and we have to find a way to be able to turn it out into the world. And he said that's part of what our, our growth and the right sort of developmental things that currently move us in that direction. Right. Coats is a bit more in the sense that um, we are other driven and we want the investment of others and so there is a healthy amount of narcissism that would push anybody into public office. Um, you, you have to tolerate or at least crave and pursue that sort of investment and interest and that um, someone like, like Clinton uh, may be Again, the article was talking about he might be a different form of narcissism. Again, I, I, didn't, I didn't say that it was the article, wasn't me. Right. Uh, and that uh, you could almost, in a way, compare and contrast maybe Trump and Clinton in terms of right. how they might handle this, uh, this investment and this need for connection. And that might, that might be interesting. Well, it's, it's really interesting <clears throat> that so many people have kind of jumped on the uh, Donald Trump bandwagon or mm. supporters, strong supporters. And even when some of this... Um, very controversial uh, uh, kind of presentation is made mm -hmm. that they don't doubt that. It's almost like it reinforces something with them. In other words, he said at one point I could go out on Fifth Avenue and shoot someone and I would not lose any voters. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, who makes that statement? Yeah, but, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting. We could probably go, we, we could do a whole show on the list of things, just the list that he said. Uh, well, we'll look at any, any charismatic leader, uh, and, and the history shows that there are a number of what pe people who appear to be uh, malignant narcissists who come into power. They become leaders of cults, they become leaders of nations. I mean, there is something both alluring, there is something. Um, the narcissist, um, and again, there are different types of narcissism, but there are the, the you know the, um, the the type of narcissist who has the capacity to draw you in. Um, that can you can you can feel uh, a warm glow in their presence. They stoke the fires in you as as their own fires get stoked. And uh, again and again through history, that 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 has proven uh, bad things have happened. Yes, and well, the, the, the issue that um, a, a, a supporter is sort of reinforced for some of their own narcissism, if you will, in that way, but I heard someone say that these are people who, regardless of what happens or what is said, will still be in that camp. In other words, they, 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 they just um, sort of hunker down uh, and mm -hmm. stay in that, even more so, even mm -hmm. strongly, a more strong mm -hmm. support for mm -hmm. Uh, for the person in this, and that's a little strange. It, it's a, it's yeah, there's a some interesting research on that. I was reading some of that this morning. Um, um, that um, and it's called. Uh, oh, it's, there's a there's a there's a term for it. And there's some interesting research on that. That having a piece of knowledge can cause you to be ignorant of other forms of knowledge, and that knowing and and um, there's some interesting research, which and again, it, not to be too political, but on the difference between conservative and liberal. Um, um, personalities and even yeah. brain functioning and uh, one of the things that pop up again and again and there's also a notion of fascism and this this measure of fascism and how in some ways Trump's rhetoric speaks from a fascist perspective you know that there's a way in which that is us and them right there's a way in which that it, you know that, uh, in, that um, in fact you can go back and you can look at some of um, of uh, whether it's uh, whether it, and again shouldn't how long do you go into a conversation before you drop the Hitler bomb? But uh, we're, yeah, we're farther enough in this. <laughs> I think I can it. do this. Well, it's often in politics you see that. <laughs> yeah, there's that. Out. They throw but, that out very easily. You know, Hitler Hitler ran on a platform of making Germany great again. That's what the idea of a third Reich was. Wow. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I mean, that really that's, was. That's not a ball cap. Stalin, I want, by the way, uh, was you know very much about this um, this creating a utopia. That we will we will make this place that we we will return to and 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 um, so the, there are these so all that sort of runs through this sort of fascist rhetoric, but what seems to be interesting is if you look at some of the research on um, on uh, on politics and uh, through this liberal and conservative divide, there, there are two or three things that stand out. One of those is disgust responses. They hooked. Um, they hooked individuals up to uh, functional MRIs and showed them pictures of like, you know, like um, a muffin with maggots on it. And uh, based on the response um, that they saw in the functional MRI, they were up to, it was like an 83% chance of determining what their politics were. Wow. They could okay. literally say that, that they could make that call with that level of, of, of certainty. And the other was this notion of openness to experience. Um, yeah. So there's there's disgust and these 
uh, and uh, there are a couple of others too, but that, I think that was the most interesting. And if you'll notice in Trump's rhetoric, there are Mexicans, there are rapists pouring across the border. Right. That, right, that's, right. that's a narrative that he pulls from. Mm -hmm. And he, he makes this broad, Muslims, maybe right. we need to stop Muslims from coming into this country. He talks about, uh, at one point, um, attacking the families of, um, of, of, of ISIS people. Right. Uh, of right. bringing back right. waterboarding or worse. Right. And, and both of these reflect a... Um, and, and I might add, the, some of the recent ones had to do with why can't we use nuclear weapons? Mm -hmm. So Which even is, uh, pull out the, <laughs> <laughs> the weapons. Yeah, that's, that, uh, very interesting point. Yeah, right? that's, that, 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 I didn't mean to take you yeah, off yeah, no, on no. there. But, but I have been grown like, up in a time when, when the nuclear threat loomed large. That's really, that really doesn't... Right, that's, that's right, not right. A, but, but, but also... Yeah, go ahead. I, but I but these are that. all fear responses. These are all uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the very active amygdala of... Uh, of, of, right. uh, of uh, that they activate that part of the brain, and, and there's something about um, uh, when you say that his base, there's nothing he could do that could that they wouldn't vote against him, and it may have something to do with this, 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 uh, this fear, this being grounded and needing to act quickly, and decisively, and uh, maybe even violently in the face of what looks like an overwhelming and consuming threat. Right. I mean, the, the, the notion of playing to the fear is a, is, a, is a big strategy. It's a huge strategy now in, in politics across the board, probably more for one party than, than the other. But nevertheless, it, it's there and it plays to that very deep sort of. And, and at the same time, they're talking about uh, change. And I think we can all kind of go along with the idea of change. But when you add that to uh, this fear that's being promoted, and you should be fearful, kind of thing. Um, but, but even when you talk about change, the of that, <coughs> and so. there's certainly always there's a difference between improvement and we're screwed. We better do something desperate. Right. right? There's a big exactly. difference, exactly. and I think that part of what what's played up, and, and how this may link to the narcissism, um, or, or um, it it, it um, there there is there is uh, that warm glow of certainty that the narcissist gives off. And, and you'll notice, and again, right. th this may simply be political theater, and I'm not saying that I've followed uh, Trump's, um, Trump's platform with, with, uh, with a fine-tooth comb, but uh, you often make very vague promises, like, right. um, you know, we're going to... Cr you'll say things like, crime is the worst it's ever been in the history of the United States, and we're going to fix that. Well, the problem with that, and, and, and that sort of paraphrasing of things that were said, crime right, actually right. isn't... Crime may be up in uh, a few major cities, gone down overall, but actually though, overall yeah. it's, it's incredibly low. Police violence uh, also, even though it may seem like that's not the case. There are all these things that, you know, that, and you, um, the fact that somehow there are all these rapists flooding from Mexico, there's absolutely nothing to support that. Nothing. But you play into the fear when you say those provocative kind of, make those provocative statements. And so that kind of keeps things going. And you got, you're touching on something within the, the individual supporter um, and the group that um, resonates with them and uh, kind of triggers that almost primal kind of response in that. Well, here's a, here's a gentleman who is 70 years of age, I understand. And mm -hmm. uh, so that, that, Begins, I begin Does that to think account about for the this. orange color? Does that, is I it a certain don't know age, if you get more orange. Do you become you more him? orange, or um, is that a? But 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 it leads me to this question about whether or not a person can change the personality disorder mm -hmm. um, issue. If that were the case, um, well, my wife's been hoping for this. 20, 20 something years. I know your wife, she's and I'm been, sure she does. As a matter of she's fact, she's really uh, uh, <laughs> wondering about. She's banking on something. When is this going to turn the corner? <laughs> So that's my question. A hopeful woman, by the way. Very well, yeah. <laughs> yes, and uh, has endured uh, <laughs> for a long time. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, w is there a possibility for the, the narcissistic personality disorder uh, person to change? Is there some, and I've even heard on talk shows an intervention uh, was mm -hmm. being talked about at some point. But, mm -hmm. I mean, um, and others that said, we see the true core of this person now this is what we have and it's not going to change mm. so well i wouldn't expect um, while someone is in the white house many things forms of intervention or the possibility of change 
<laughs> but <laughs> actually, it's funny because most narcissists come to treatment because they've been forced by family members. Okay. It's seldom a self-motivated yeah. yeah, that makes occurrence. sense, right. I mean, if I'm narcissistic and it's all about myself and I'm the most a, important person in the room and mm. I've got all the ideas and I think Donald Trump said mm. his, uh, he talks to a lot of people but his primary consultant is himself. Um, um, so why would a person a, go into therapy? Like a Woody, what's that Woody Allen quote? Um, um, about, uh, uh, but maybe I won't go there. All right, that's all right. <laughs> all right, we'll cut. But, but uh, yeah, that, so that's the notion. So this person wouldn't normally, on their own, mm -hmm. go into treatment or look would for not. some change process. So even e given that, is it even possible for change? Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's two, two things that might bring a narcissist in. Three things, really. Um, the desire to fix the people around them, being forced into treatment because of the people around them, okay. or their symptoms have become significantly egodystonic. They are in such a place of suffering that they, are, that, that they have no other choice. So there are three things. That, okay. There may be others, but th th those can be three categories okay. that we can link anticipate. If you look right. at some of the, and, and there's some interesting research on this. In fact, you know, they were, they were trying to get rid of narcissistic personality disorder in the DSM-5. That's right. We were talking real, about they were, You said there was hope for you. I, if they the got rid you of it, I'd be cured. You would be cured. You'd be fine. <laughs> but, uh, However, it's still there. But it's still there. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, and part of that had to do with that they thought that they could sort of distribute um, narcissistic personality disorder into other, into other categories and whatnot. But if you look at the outcome research on this, and um, uh, some of it is, is anecdotal, particularly the stuff that I know, but uh, what Koa talked about is, you know, uh, this is a disorder of insight and compassion for both self and other. And so those are the things you want to be able to generate in the person that you're with. You want to maybe be able to slow them down enough. Like if we give my example of a guy getting angry at his roommate, if we can get him connected to what he feels, for him to say, you know, I feel that uh, when my roommate doesn't clean the dishes, that he is making me, making me feel less than. He's making me feel small. And if you okay. slow it down enough, the individual has a chance to be able to name that experience and to own it in such a way they can do something different with it. It doesn't right. become this knee-jerk, reflexive, narcissistic response. They can slow it down enough. And, you know, right. some of the research that I know about this involves that this concept of mentalization. If you can get them to say, well, the roommate didn't clean up the dishes because the roommate doesn't do, isn't clean in, in many areas of their life. Uh, right. This is a problem the roommate has, and maybe it's because they didn't have the parents to help them to be able to develop these skills, whatever the case may be, but the roommate begins to humanize the other. It begins to see their, their roommate as someone who did this not motivated by as a, a direct attack, but motivated by, motivated by their own failings, generates a compassion in the other, the capacity to mentalize them, to be aware of their own response, and then they can do something with it that isn't reflexive. That's a lot. Right. That, yeah. that is a lot. So I don't know if I, I, got, I garnered a lot of hope uh, about mm. this change occurring. Um, well, if, if this, we can call, and not that we're calling Trump a narcissist, but this a congresswoman right. does. Um, it's interesting because w w what I may say is would be in Trump's favor is folks who are um, pathologically narcissistic often don't. Uh, this is a man who's been able to sustain some level of success and has been able to maintain relationships with others in such a way that would suggest wherever he lands on the narcissistic spectrum, he, he at least has some compensatory and uh, he has some, some strengths he can pull from. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to say how much of with Trump isn't um, either um, maybe a role that he plays, that he, that right. this may not, how much of this is maybe carefully constructed. Well, you talked about this being sort of a, almost a theatrical presentation mm -hmm. in some ways, and um, there have been certainly been some questions about about that. It does seem extraordinary. I mean, I mm -hmm. don't think I think you, you want, once in one of our earlier episodes talked about, and we mentioned the politics, and you said it's never been like this in your mm -hmm. lifetime. Yeah, this is this, is this is a new thing. I've, uh, I was uh, on the way over here. I was uh, listening to NPR, and there was a historian saying that. Well, actually, they were sort of talking about. There, there have been some precedent for this. However, uh, you know, I think what, what sows the seeds for this is we, we live in a, a level of, of, of connection through the internet and through, um, you know, all these different sources, Certainly Facebook, Twitter, what, by yeah. the way, yes. Our current level of interconnectivity, I think, generates the possibility for someone to, um, to uh, if you look at the, the popular TV show that ended not long ago, The Colbert Report. Right. 
he sort of well. generated this sort of this this sort of caricature. I think we live in a day and an age with all this interconnectivity that that it's possible for the cult of personality to be resurrected in such a way that we could see things like this. I mean, it's right. it's uh, it, it, I think yeah. that there's you know there's a level that there there is. It, the stage is set for uh -huh. this kind of presentation in a way when, when really I, I think what's important to a lot of us is uh, some genuineness, uh, some authenticity, mm -hmm. um, a person that's real that mm -hmm. deals with the difficult things mm -hmm. in their lives and sort of gives a measured response mm -hmm. as opposed to some reactive mm -hmm. 140 but character in, in, response. And th 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 this, um, what I'm about to say is probably hard to be controversial, but if, if there are those of us who are as... Uh, um, neurologically different that they respond to fear if they respond their openness to experience are different then then um, um, there may be something intractable about this right. you know and, right. and it, but it also may be because I, I, as you might gather I, I tend more toward the left spectrum of things okay I mean I just that's that's my uh, so it's very sure. easy to be able to you know, to um, to come at this from an elitist perspective or whatnot, but well, right. Well, just what you just did there mm -hmm. was sort of recognize the bias or recognize something in you that might um, sort of slant the the mm -hmm. outcome. And that was, I, I, I don't just, hear that in that was, was that that was an act of mentalization. I right. just was thinking. You know, I was I had had the capacity for self reflection to slow myself down enough to be able to say, okay, and that it, 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 that's a non splitting space. That is a capacity to see, you know, nuance and variation, and that's difficult to maintain when you are feeling lots of things. Right. You know, there's a sure. whole saying that you know that um, uh, when you are madly in love, that's a lousy time to mentalize. Your love right. object is the greatest thing on the planet. Right. Right. If if you are, uh, you know, if you uh, if you are experiencing intense emotional experiences, moving to shades of black and white are really important. Um, however, when it comes to um, nuanced decision, when, when making uh, plans for a uh, future involve the capacity to be able to think about complexities. Yes, our, our world is so complex and mm -hmm. all of those situations that seem to be sort of in the press with these uh, sound bites mm -hmm. uh, don't really represent the true complexity of making a good decision that affects so many people. Well, well I, on another talk show I, um, that I, I, I was listening to said that uh, if we're doing an intervention that it has to be about his success, Mr. Mm -hmm. Trump's business. If he's losing money, if he is... Uh, Unfortunately, he's not. He's not. He's literally turned... If what I'm saying, he's, he's one of the few... The first presidential king in history that may actually turn a profit, or he was during the primaries. Maybe I'm wrong, but so yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of uh, in, even in today's news. There's a, a notion of the the small contributions and how many of those that he's also caught up uh, a great deal in in terms of funding simply from the ten dollar, twenty dollar donation mm -hmm. from so many people. Yes, but but in in order to change, and I think we're still kind of on that topic of is there something that will help him sort of balance? Mm -hmm. He's gotten a lot of advice, Mr. Trump, from mm -hmm. a, a lot of consultants, but he's not paid attention. To any of it, he's always been well, it, no, sort of. If if down if the he were path. someone with a nurse's disturbance, part of what happens in that moment of, of wounding, and um, narcissists are very vulnerable to wounding, they're going to act reflexively. Okay. So all the you know, when you're sitting in a room full of a bunch of people with advisors, you're much less likely to receive the wound that you would if you were being interviewed or if you were up on the stage and there's all sorts of things happening. I, it, it's difficult to see someone with a narcissistic disturbance not acting reflexively, just just like that. Right. You know, Doris Kearns Goodwin wrote the book about Lincoln, mm -hmm. and it, the, the, some of the one of the premises of the book is that you surround yourself with a lot of different people, even those mm -hmm. who disagree with you um, so that you get that information in to make a good decision. I'm not sure his, his decision to surround himself with supermodels. I mean, I'm I not sure it's that more generates like what, what uh, that, we uh, have. He said, yeah. I, I think the only difference between me and the other candidates is that I'm more honest and my women are more beautiful. 
That, that, that almost sounds like something Conan the Barbarian would say. That, that sounds like, <laughs> am I wrong? That sounds like, uh, you know. Well, it, it certainly uh, seems to be, but this is a very interesting time. And so I'm glad today we had a chance to talk about uh, what's going on in the public arena. And, and certainly right now it's very important to a lot of people. We're all very interested in how this turns out. We want the best for the country, uh, that kind of thing. And so there, and still there's that divide. There's there's a split. It's almost like the mental health term that we talk about with borderline personality and bipolar and so forth, that they split people. And it seems like the country has had this almost this mental mm -hmm. um, uh, kind of definition that we use applied to the country at large, and mm -hmm. we're split for, for certain reasons. So, um, and in fact, it, it would all be wonderfully interesting if it, is, if it weren't possible that it might kill me, you know? Right. <laughs> and, right. and to do, one thing to be able to see things from afar and notice, but to be in the middle of it and, you know, to be a little worried about. Uh, I actually see in my practice folks who are worried about po politics often makes people anxious, but right. this seems to be generating a level of fear and anxiety. I, I would think so. If we kind of look mm -hmm. at what, uh, the clients that are coming into our practice and going to counseling every day, uh, this is overlaid on what they're dealing with, their own personal issues and uh, <laughs> relationships, and all of a sudden politics is, is really having an impact more so than we've seen you know, in, mm -hmm. in quite a while. So, uh, fi final thoughts on this narcissistic personality disorder. This mm -hmm. is something that occurs, um, if you're diagnosed with this, it it's has occurred over a long period of time. There's evidence to say it's across situations. It's not just a one sort of event, but it's a multiple events. It's seen uh, throughout. There's evidence for that thing. A, a focus on, on the uh, individual and their personality and uh, the need to seek attention, the need to be some grandiose in some ways, almost a lack of empathy, I suppose, we've talked about. Um, final thoughts on this uh, narcissist. What I think about this is the, the untreated narcissist can really only be managed. And um, I, th I think that's often very important that, um, you know, uh, uh, when I'm working with family members or individuals who have someone in their life who uh, can be malignantly narcissistic or uh, for them to be able to give a name to what the other person is and doing and to find a way to manage the other and themselves when they're in the presence of the narcissist. Right. Uh, what that would do on a national, look like on a national level, I'm not sure. Right. I don't know. Um, it's hard. It'd be hard to manage, I think that's the word, but it, yeah, it, it does seem like that. I mean, we can manage our responses if, if we're in the uh, close proximity of that. And, I do have one thing though, and I, we talked about this, this, this last week. Um, I find that uh, in moments of despair, when I'm losing a bit of hope, when I am, uh, when I'm feeling overwhelmed by events, say political events, um, I go to the ham camp, and you can simply gaze at the world's oldest ham in real time, at any moment. It, it, uh, I think it helps. That that kind of suits the the, the ham the cam. live cam. I of think the, the live ham cam, the world's oldest ham. And down I that road, feel... been there. I have not looked at it, by the way. You should have. Done that. I have sorry. spent hours, hours, <laughs> me and the ham. Well, I, I feel a certain connection, and you know, and I'm, I think anything that works for you, I would be for, and um, and hopefully this has been helpful to you today, mm -hmm. uh, but also to the folks viewing. And I want to thank you for tuning in to Got Therapy, Michael Baltimore, Dr. Dan Rose. We're here. Tune in next time. We'll see you then.